Well, folks, welcome to this week's episode of The Boundless Show. Lisa Anderson here with you. Well, here we are for our roundtable, and I have got Alex, John, and Katie in the studio. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey Lisa. Lisa. We're back, and you guys, this is so fun because you get to be victims, I mean oh, contestants, no. on my... <laughs> question game. We're going to talk about questions, the art of asking and answering good questions. And some of this was born out of, um, it was really funny, like John and I were on a a same wavelength here because he came and asked me about this. And I was like, funny thing, I just attended this thing called the Global Leadership Summit, where one of the sessions was led by Vanessa Van Edwards, who is a I want to say like a sociologist, like a researcher, specialist in kind of dynamics in the workplace, like interpersonal dynamics. Mm -hmm. And she did her whole session on the power of good questions Mm -hmm. in the sense of who hasn't walked down the hall at work and someone says, hey, how's it going or how are you? And then you're just like, good, you know, or, or everyone says like, good. And then you inevitably say, busy, because you don't know yeah. what else to say, or everyone feels like it's they're Friday. busy. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're me, you don't even ask how people are. You say, hey, hi there. And then people respond, good, thanks, because they're not even <laughs> listening to your question. <laughs> okay. It's a good test. That happens to me all the time. So today we're going to talk a little bit about asking questions and have fun with it because I'm going to be honest, I am a question expert. Um, I'm a self-proclaimed <laughs> expert in what I call um, orchestrated fellowship because I don't trust people to have normal conversations. Mm-hmm. And so I force them I'm so with you. by asking <laughs> questions. And so in fact, this happened in my own neighborhood. Uh, this was this was last summer-ish, maybe, I think, or early fall. We had a neighborhood gathering, and everyone's just sitting around talking about their home improvement projects. And I'm like, this is so boring, and it was super <laughs> surfacy. So I'm like, I've got a question, and I throw it out. And turns out I just started asking a bunch of questions. And I have my neighbors across the street. She has not stopped talking about that. She was like, that was so fantastic and your questions and we need to get to know one another more in our neighborhood and all this stuff. So I was like, yeah, that's why we have to ask questions. Mm. It's good. Um, Okay. So, and of course, you know, it's not only in the workplace. We can easily talk to people. And the first thing you ask is, you know, so what do you do? Or where are you from? Or it's kind of the standard rote questions, which I think at some point you got to like, know these things about people so I'm not saying like never ask what someone does but we just kind of get a little too comfortable in those questions so anyway the point of this um, session that I attended at the summit was to really kind of come up with ones that are more connective of people and she kind of divvied things up into level one level two and level three questions and I thought that was interesting and of course you know as you progress through the levels you go through deeper types of questions but I want to kind of kick it off by just saying generally how comfortable are you with someone asking you questions as you're getting to know them or do you like being the person who likes asking questions or are you bad at both (laughs) (laughs) I I really appreciate uh what you said about orchestrated fellowship I Mm -hmm. totally get that and so I'm usually the one asking the questions but if someone asks me questions like if we're on a road trip and they pull out a list of you know, get to know you's that are a little deeper than where you're from, what do you do? Mm. I love it. I love being in the um, hot seat, I guess you might say. Yeah, that's fun. Mm. So I definitely am the question asker. Okay. Um, I was that way even when I was a kid. I just love being kind of an investigative type of personality. And I, I have even had friends at times tell me, hey, you ask a lot of questions. Maybe you <laughs> shouldn't do so much of that, which has been good, but it comes yeah. very naturally to me. I can literally be in a conversation and I'll try to pop out 10 questions before the other person maybe even gets in two or three. But the conversations... Like, okay, Anderson Cooper, just right. back off, back off. The yeah. conversations I enjoy the most, though, are the dynamic ones where it's back and forth. I definitely... Even if I get to, let's say, that 10-question part, after a while, it will start to get a little old if it's not reciprocated. So um, I definitely love it when it's dynamic and back and forth. 
Though I noticed that when we were talking about questions you like being asked, you like being asked about the NASCAR season, oh, which yeah. I'm like, um, <laughs> snooze fest. Like, no one, never will I ask you about NASCAR, John. I, because honestly, I don't even care. Um, okay, I care about you as a friend, but mm-hmm. I think we're going to have to find something else to talk about because that's not going to be it. So, all right, Katie, how about you? I'm really bad at asking questions. Okay. It's a problem. I'm <laughs> trying to work on it. I'm trying to work on it. I think I've gotten a lot better. I used to be a super shy kid, okay. which a lot of people are really surprised by because I'm usually pretty loud, but I'm still working on the question part. I, I love, like, it takes me a while to develop deeper relationships. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh, I can get to those deeper relationships if I ask better questions. But so it's some, it's a skill that I'm working on okay. I'm not great at it okay but what um so what would you guys say like d- can you guys think of a person in your life like past or present who you were just like oh they are such a great connector like the person that really oh, yeah. does know how to be that person and draw people out and kind of you know I mean well clearly John is probably that kind of person he's just <laughs> good at that and he's very um observational as well of people so that's I think a good trait uh, to have and to be a student of others and stuff. But, um, yeah. What are, what are some of those traits that you've seen in people where you're like, wow, they're just so great at that. I think curiosity is Mm -hmm. the biggest one is a genuine, like, instead of just trying to manage the social interaction, which is what I fall into a lot, Mm -hmm. how, how, like, how can I ask these questions? How can I manage this interaction? So it ends cleanly. Like that's more of my objective as opposed to the people that I really admire, that are that have genuine curiosity for the people around them that yeah. are willing to maybe even stick around in a social situation longer than it might be i guess mm-hmm. socially comfortable just because they love people and they want to know like what makes this person tick yeah hmm. my friend meg does this really well she and i were really good buddies in college and we have stayed in touch since then but she's really good about asking questions that are very affirming okay mm-hmm. um case in point i remember one time i was thinking about Um, kind of my own future. And she even asked me out of the blue one day, have you thought about writing as an art? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I actually have. And she said, you should go for it. And I would even start writing short stories shortly after that. And she was always very encouraging to me to keep trying it and keep getting better. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that she was really good about just asking affirming questions, I think goes a a long way Mm -hmm. because nobody wants to be around the person who's the type where they're asking questions, but they're doing it in a mean way. Yeah. Or it's very obvious that, Oh, why do why do you like that football team? They're the worst team ever. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Those types of questions I think can get old after a while because it's obvious the person's trying to undercut you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who does this amazing job. She'll ask some of the basic questions first, Mm -hmm. but then she'll go deeper on Mm -hmm. those basic questions. So like she might be like, oh, what do you do for work? And mm-hmm. then they'll say, and she'll be like, well, how do you feel about that? Like, how hmm. how do you like it? What do you do? And she sounds like she genuinely cares, which she really does. She's yeah. like amazing. Like she says it in such a way that you're like, wow, you really care about me, even though I ju- we just met. Mm-hmm. You just feel like this connection with her instantly. Mm-hmm. And I, I admire that so much. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that goes back, I think, to Alex's point about curiosity of like when you really care and when you really do want to get to know the person, it just prompts you to think of more questions to mm-hmm. ask them and to really be genuine in your interest instead of like, well, I guess I better ask something else to kill dead air or, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Okay, well, let's practice this because I thought, you know, there, (laughs) I alluded to the fact that there are level one, two, and three questions. So one of the suggested level one questions that uh, Vanessa gave in this session uh, basically goes like this. And I think it's so great because, you know, again, one of those first things that you could be asked is just like, oh, you know, how's your day going or what's up today or whatever. And that's so like broad, you know, and super vague. And you Mm -hmm. often don't know what to do with it. You're just like, what have I done? I answered some emails. What can I talk about? Um, But her question, which kind of turns it a little bit and gets a little bit more specific is what has been the highlight of your day so far, which I think is a great way of positioning that because one, it limits the amount of time you're talking about. I mean, all of us have lived like what, six or seven hours so far today or something. So we don't have to like think of the whole span of our lives. But also then it it's a positive ask, mm-hmm. you know, it's what's been the highlight, not, you know, let's not be total downers here. So, okay, so I want everyone to um, answer this. So, so far, you guys, what has been the highlight of today so far for you? So I woke up with my wife very early this morning because we're training for a 5K right oh, now that we're wow. going to be running. 
And that was not the highlight of my day, waking up. <laughs> but the highlight of my day was after we got back from running, uh, my wife Megan said, how about you hop in the shower? Like I, we, we hadn't packed a lunch the previous night. She says, I'll make us some sandwiches for lunch. Mm. Go Aww. ahead, take your time in the That's shower, awesome. go for it. And I felt kind of silly because when I was at Costco, I saw a great deal on cheese, but it's just the block cheese. <laughs> oh. yeah. And for me, just me, I love, you know, choosing the thickness of my like slices for my sandwich. I like them nice and thick. So I was like, perfect for me. Take it home. Megan's like, why don't you get a block of cheese? <laughs> this is added work for me. So the fact that she chose to slice the cheese that... Uh, <laughs> in the appropriate in thickness. In the appropriate, yes, the appropriate thickness. And because I know that she okay. didn't want to do that. And also just let me shower. That was just very kind. So I, I was just like, wow, cool. that's a highlight. That's good. This round table right here. Well, yeah, obviously. Come on. obviously. I mean, this is absolutely. Present company excluded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this has been great. I, I think one thing actually um, before this round table that was a big highlight is um, there is a group here on campus that I'm a part of where we just get together and chat about life early in the mornings. Alex yeah. is actually part of that group. Uh-huh. So it's a group of guys where we really just check in and say, hey, how's it going? Is there any way we can be praying for you? Oh, and awesome. um, we've started doing that roughly two to three days a week now. Mm-hmm. And so it's really just a good kind of way to keep ourselves accountable and also to keep ourselves in prayer. Mm-hmm. That's been a nice incentive just to have other guys to do life with and um, to keep each other accountable and to be praying for each other on Mm -hmm. a regular basis. So that was a big highlight for sure. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's really great. Yeah, for me, um, I actually got a picture of some of my friends who were still in college. um, And they sent, they're all eating lunch together and they just sent me a picture of all of them making like really dumb faces. And it put (laughs) such a smile on my face and they were like, and there was like an empty chair and they were like, this chair was yours. Like you will never be able to replace you. Like we miss you so much. And that mm. just, um, just like feeling so, I don't know, like feeling like loved. Cause it's different when mm. I, when you move away from college and your friends that you've had for four years and then they're still there and you're not just yeah. being recognized and showing that like making me feel loved, I guess mm. it was just a huge highlight today. Yeah. That's super great. Um, I would say mine is a tie between I ended a juice cleanse today. Praise Mm. God. Mm. Um, I just, my weekend was ruined because I had such a massive caffeine withdrawal. I couldn't even barely (laughs) handle it. Um, So that is over. And I got some good insights from it. You know, I'm trying to tackle some like inflammation in my back. All of a sudden I'm like, hey, my back doesn't hurt. So now I got to figure out like what was I eating prior that was Mm. problematic and stuff. Tied with a message that we got at Boundless today on social from Kelly that was just a super encouragement to us. Um, Kelly actually said, um, our country, our world needs to hear truths like Boundless has, regardless of what our culture is offended by. Thanks for all you do. I've been listening to Boundless for over five years and you've positively impacted my life. And so that was just really cool to about this show. So Kelly, thank you so much for saying that and taking the time to encourage us. Mm -hmm. That means, means a lot. So that was definitely, uh, definitely a highlight. So Mm -hmm. Um, now do you like to ask people or get to know people for a certain amount of time before you kind of start going deeper or how do you, or are you the person who just pulls the trigger right away <laughs> or have people done that on you? <laughs> this is like, I keep looking at John. I'm trying right. to avert my eyes because precious John had friends tell him that he asked too many questions. <laughs> so do you go too deep too soon, John? Or what does that look like? Depends on how comfortable I am with okay. somebody. But as far as the information levels that I will share, I definitely have to get to know people for okay. probably at least a couple weeks or even a couple months. Yeah. Um, sometimes there can be triggers in the conversations with people where you recognize, oh, wait, maybe I can't trust this person with some of my more personal information mm-hmm. that maybe I could share with some other friends. But it takes a little while for mm-hmm. me to be able to get comfortable enough to share um, some of the deeper parts of my life. I tend to live on a very deep level internally. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, but once I get to know somebody, then I'm much more comfortable. That's good. Yeah. It takes me a while to get comfortable. Usually minimum a couple weeks before I like start to really open up. Mm -hmm. And then I'm better at asking questions once I actually open up. But like, I get really like turned off by people who will just ask super deep questions, like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And that's just like, I don't know you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what you're like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're compatible as friends. So I don't want to like, I just don't like going too deep too soon. It's too much for me. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Because there is a, there's a very sweet stage of friendship when you are kind of in the, the chatter, I guess, conversation where it doesn't get too deep. We're talking about our family, our friends, our favorite movies. Um, I think another pet peeve along with that, I totally agree that is a pet peeve. Another mm-hmm. pet peeve is people assuming that they know you yes. before they mm-hmm. ask those questions. Oh, yes. And before they've kind of climbed <laughs> that hill of getting to know you. Okay. And they're just like, yeah, I just seen you. Like, you really are um, this way. And I'm like, I, you don't oh, know yeah. me. And also, I'm <laughs> yeah. not that way. So appreciate it. Anyway. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So I think it's um, it, it's interesting because a lot of times, uh, in fact, one of the the second level questions that uh, this session talked about was the question, "What's your story?" Which to me is like, is that like a level two? Because I feel like yeah, that's that super really deep. deep. It's that's also deep. like really broad <laughs> and like how many people honestly like think about their story. I mean, I feel like you have to go to some kind of like a workshop to like plot that out and make it happen. (laughs) It just seems a little unattainable for me. But one of the level two questions that I do want to ask you guys, because I think this is a fun one, but also gets into a little bit of personality stuff is what book, TV or movie character is most like you? So how would you answer this? I have one. Go for it. I have one. I've been told and I think I see this too, that I'm a lot like Amy Santiago from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, mm-hmm. if you guys have seen oh. that show. Because, well, we're both at, we're both Latina. And mm-hmm. then we, um, we both, we look, I look pretty similar to the actress. Yeah. Okay. And we both get really passionate about very specific things. Okay. Like, she, like <laughs> she gets passionate about like organizing and things like that, which mm-hmm. honestly, I kind of get really excited when I get to like okay. put things in a binder. It's like so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> know what binders, it is. binders, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know what it is yeah. when you put things in a binder or you just put it where it belongs. Mm. Like there's just something about it. And I was told this when I was given like, this huge manual to read for a Mm -hmm. job that I got like overnight because we had training and the next day they were like, okay, you need to read this entire thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, great. And I came back and I read the entire thing and I had it highlighted and like little sticky notes in it. And they were like, did you actually read that? And I was like, yeah, they were like, we tell people to do that, but like no one ever does because it's really (laughs) long. And I was like, oh, and (laughs) he just looked at me. My boss just looked at me and was like, you are literally the most Amy Santiago person I've ever met in my life. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. There you go. didn't want me to read it. Don't put it in a binder. I know. It was literally in a binder. I was like, All right. Well, I'll continue the the female trend and say this is someone that actually I don't know much about because I have not watched this show except for like an episode or two. But everyone told me I have to watch Gilmore Girls because I'm like Lorelai. I could see it. And so (laughs) I've apparently like talkative or super like fast or something like that which i'm like i don't even know if is that like a compliment i don't know but anyway i will have to give the series a better chance at some point i actually started watching it and i was like i am just super exhausted and annoyed by this series Mm. so i'm gonna give it another chance and see if i can embrace lorelei and gilmore girls yeah i've been compared to poe from kung fu panda (laughs) i've been compared to to the cheetah from zootopia these big like silly characters mostly wait a minute is poe the panda poe is the panda so are you being compared to jack black or to poe poe not jack black (laughs) poe from which is weird like and that happened like three times in real life and i was like there's something here and putting aside that their you know primary character attribute is that they're fat (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> They're also silly and goofy and funny, and I, I try to take as much you know compliments from those as possible. I personally would not say that I'm like that. I would say uh, a character that comes to mind is Wally. He just wants love. Aww. He's just doing his job. He wants to hold Aww. someone's hand. Super cute. He he likes adventure. Uh, and also, you know, I'd, he's he's less fat than Poe and the cheetah. So <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say that. Poe has martial arts skills. That's right. And you're running a 5K. <laughs> come so on. So come there on. You're right. All right. Okay, John. I've been told that I'm a little bit like John Boy from the Waltons. Oh. <laughs> which is a little funny because I've only watched half of one episode that yeah, I Yeah, that's recall. going back a ways, so, man. I, I'm a bit of an old soul when it comes to entertainment mm-hmm. sometimes. So as far as characters that I feel like I'm similar to, I feel like I'm somewhere... <laughs> this is two completely different characters. I feel like I'm somewhere in between Rick from Casablanca 
and Jimmy Stewart's character, George Bailey, and It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So you're a throb for sure. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. On the surface, I'm more like Rick, and in my temperament, I'm more like Rick, mm-hmm. but um, I want to care for people like George Bailey did, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's super sweet. All right, well, let's jump really quick to our level three question because I do want to hit it before we finish. Um, And this one, again, is a good one because it kind of turns another very common question, which, you know, is kind of just about likes, dislikes. People talk about this, like personality stuff. But this asks specifically, how do you feel most misunderstood? And I feel like this can get to a very deep, like feelings driven, like perception kind of level in stuff, which is a good way of asking this question. So how would you guys answer it? I think that I am very extroverted, Mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think I am misunderstood in that people think that I'm only extroverted Mm. and like, oh yeah, we can just throw as much social interaction as we can at this guy and he's fine. Mm -hmm. I love being alone. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. when, when it's healthy and when it's like not in long spurts, I love spending some time by myself, journaling, you know, playing some video games, watching some movies. Um, I remember when movie pass was a thing, I'd go see movies all the time mm-hmm. just by myself hmm. and it was great. Loved it. And so that's probably the biggest way I've been misunderstood. That's good. That's a good one. Yeah. Mine's a little bit of a strong one. So, um, for those who haven't lost a parent at a young age, sometimes, um, there, there've been a couple of situations where after my mom died, where, um, people who had great intentions would, even though they had not been through the same thing, would actually try to give me advice on how to handle mm. it. Oh, yeah. And to be very fair to um, those people, I was that way sometimes with um, when I would interact with somebody who had gone through a traumatic loss. And mm-hmm. so something I have learned from it is some of the most powerful things you can say to somebody who is going through a loss that is that big, whether it's losing a parent or losing a sibling or um, a close relative one of the most powerful phrases you can say in that moment is, hey, I'm here if you need me. Mm -hmm. If you just need a listening ear. And sometimes just sitting and listening can go Mm -hmm. such a long way. Mm. That's good thoughts. I feel like I always get misunderstood. At least this is like something that has come up in conversation with other people is that I seem really serious and intimidating when they first meet because I'm Mm. like more reserved when I first meet people. Mm -hmm. And so I guess a lot of people are really intimidated by Mm -hmm. that or just like it, it just makes me seem like I'm disinterested in other people when in reality it's is that because just... you're an organized Latina maybe <laughs> who loves maybe. binders <laughs> maybe that They're has very something to do with it okay. yeah <laughs> but in my mind I'm like I am like five foot one and like I don't like I like that just like that doesn't make any sense to me mm. and I very much try to be a very like caring person i i try to be the person that like people can go to and be like like a like a stable person Mm -hmm. like that's what i really try to do and i feel like sometimes it comes off as especially when i first meet people Mm -hmm. like one of my best friends was like oh i was super intimidated by you when i first met you and i was like what gave you that like what did i do and i keep trying to figure out like what am i doing that is making you feel this way no one can give me an answer but um i just think that i just that's how I feel like misunderstood the most is like a lot of people just, I think they just assume because I'm not super open Mm -hmm. at first that I must be like, "Mm, Mm -hmm. I don't really want to get to know you. I'm like above you or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, as I just saw, it was yesterday or the day before, according to the philosopher Pitbull, um, (laughs) I saw a video interview with him and he described women in general as the most powerful force in the world. So I'm just saying, I think probably you need to embrace it, Katie. Okay. And just be okay with it. So, okay. I feel like my response to this would be um, kind of along the lines of what Alex said. I'm a super rational person. I'm very logical. I'm a high T on the Myers Briggs, like, so I can just be like, yeah, okay, like very cut and dry, very bottom line. And I think people assume that as a result, I do not have feelings Mm. or that I don't live at all in feelings or anything, or that I can just be the good soldier and be the one who picks up, you Mm. know, in anything. And so, um, yeah, so sometimes that's a challenge for me. And I can feel, uh, you know, kind of definitely misunderstood and kind of wounded in that or feeling like I'm having to be something that I'm not Mm. really. So 
Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, the moral of this story is we have to be relational and ask great questions of people, be intentional in our question asking and answering, even if someone asks us something kind of lame because they haven't been through this round table. Wow. <laughs> but hopefully for those of you out there, you can practice with your friends and your family. Let's go after it and be the relational people that God created us to be. So thanks, y'all. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. The Boundless Show is a production of Boundless.org. Focus on the family.